Good afternoon uh, and welcome to Seahawks in Hour. Uh, today is Wednesday, June 8th, and uh, we have a very uh, special guest today. We have uh, AJ Myers with us, and um, AJ Myers has been assisting um, the, the Navajo and Hopi Families COVID-19 Relief Fund by providing uh, wood cutting and wood hauling services. So um, throughout the pandemic, uh, we've had a number of requests um, from from a lot of uh, people in need, you know, we've mainly elderly. Uh, we tried to assist during the pandemic and uh, provide them some uh, some heating assistance. Uh, when we did this, uh, we had to reach out and and find some partners. Um, and when and in looking for partners, uh, we were able to uh, to come across AJ and his group and uh, his organization, and they've been really helping us out. Uh, since uh, since 2021, since we had first uh, kind of started um, assisting uh, um, everybody, but mainly, you know, when we're, what we're talking about here is um, is heating assistance. So um, glad to have you guys here today. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, my name is Mahayo Manis. I'm the Public Relations Director with the Navajo and Hopi Families COVID-19 Relief Fund. And um, I'm from Chinle, Arizona. Uh, currently reside in St. Michael's. So uh, I wanna go ahead and uh, turn it over to AJ here and uh, let him introduce himself and talk a little bit about uh, his organization. So go ahead, AJ. Oh, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. She aims J. Myers and she key on and she don't look at the net, but she's chin. Shot to her day, she got a night group and went to school on Shadow Mountain. Uh, from Shadow Mountain, I went to school in Tuba City, uh, class of 2002. Um, <clears throat> our organization. Uh, we started out hauling firewood years ago. Um, when I moved back in the area, I was gone for a while. I pursued work, traveled the country, and was gone for quite a few years. And I uh, moved back home, near home, and started helping my parents out and looking after quite a few people, um, helping them obtain firewood, the elderly in our area. And it just grew from there. So probably about eight years ago, that's when we started hauling more than what we needed. We started taking care of and helping out other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, COVID hit. And so our organization has just been mainly our, our family. So my younger brother, sister, older sister, my mm -hmm. father. So I have... Uh, Three younger sisters, uh, one younger brother, and an older sister. Um, so, and you know, when we go out and we obtain wood and we come back, my mom's there to help us. So, she has a meal prepared for us and stuff like that. So, that's what we just normally do just hang out and have fun. All right. So, um, we started big in 2020. We had um, worked with Nature Conservancy. Mm -hmm. So that was our first big 500 cords that was delivered there at the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, that was when people were asking, uh, what's your group name and stuff like that. And if you want to join an organization and how you want to go forward and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. um, I sat down and thought about what we wanted to call ourselves and what our group should be called. And my mom just messaged us and just said, oh, just think about what you're doing it for, who you're doing it for. And that's how the name came about, the Nepal Data. So for our viewers, tell us uh, what that translates into. For the people, it's a Navajo, for the people. Uh, we we the net you know it 
is the people, and then the nipple or but they did so that's what we we're doing it for. Like, mm -hmm. So that's what it translates out to for the people. Yeah. So um, thanks for that uh, introduction, and uh, also you know uh, we want to thank you for um, just helping us uh, stepping up. Uh, I know that uh, many times when we were, uh, when our organization, the Navajo and Hopi Families COVID-19 Relief Fund um, started to um, started to need um, volunteers to help us, to partner up with us, uh, to provide uh, wood hauling and uh, wood cutting services, you know, for our elders. Um, we know that you, you stepped up and, and were able to help us and early on, uh, I, I said 2021, but like you're, you had said, in 2020, uh, as the pandemic had kind of started to really hit um, and, and kind of reduce services to a lot of our uh, community members, um, there was a lot of restrictions in place, you know, uh, especially curfews and things like that. I know that uh, early on, they did um, pro provide some exceptions for uh, people to do things that were necessary, you know, kind of like necessities. And some of those things were, were wood cutting and wood hauling. And um, so during, during those times, uh, you know, let's talk, let's kind of just remember back as the, as the pandemic had, had uh, started to impact the Navajo Nation. Um, during those times, then you, you and your family, um, and you said that your crew is kind of mainly made up of your, your family. You guys were going out and uh, and um, finding finding wood hauling spots, or you already knew of wood hauling spots, and uh, just kind of um, starting to gather wood. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Um, pen, when the pandemic set in, stay at home orders and stuff like that, um, we started off just helping with um, personal shopping. I we noticed that um, sure. a lot of people. We noticed that a lot of people needed things, so we, we went out and uh, tried to help obtain things, bleach, um, sanitizing supplies, and stuff like that. So that's what we started off with at the beginning and went into summer. And then summertime, we were sitting there and um, thinking about, man, this is going to drag on into winter, and we don't we don't see nothing going on, like wood hauling wise so um, the people probably need help with that. So we tried looking around uh, what we could do. Um, there was a few phone calls made and uh, we got in touch with uh, somebody with the National Forest and they told us about a program. So it was uh, Nature Conservancy is the one that we work, we work with, na uh, National Forest. <laughs> so they said, um, we can obtain this amount of wood, which was uh, they just went by loads and when we calculated it out it turned into 500 cords oh, so man. that's what was 500 plus cords is what we estimated we got delivered mm. on log trucks that came into Tuba City Fairgrounds um, we had to coordinate with quite a few people um, oh, Tuba City Fair um, Mike Six Killer oh yeah um, we had to call or talk to uh, the police station. Uh, we knew that there was a curfew in place and we told them that what we, were, we had plans, um, that we were gonna be out there working and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, yeah. we also had um, trying to get the word out how we were gonna do this. And so when the wood came, we had People come out and cut and load their own uh, if they could, mm -hmm. but um, some of the wood was heading to Hopi Reservation, so we had to let the Hopi Rangers know as well. So we had to make phone calls out that way and tell them about what we had going on and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So just to get the word out, we posted a uh, uh, cut and load your own. So mm -hmm. we had a weekend of that, and then we had volunteers show up. Um, you know, when the project starts, you get a lot of volunteers that come out, and then as it keeps going and going, it starts to dwindle down. But uh, that first season was was awesome. We had a bunch of people 
mm-hmm. over 20 volunteers uh, on a daily, on a week, on a weekend. And uh, the ones that really stood out was uh, LT John. He's out from uh, Hard Rock area. Him and his family used to come out. Mm. And, um, they took it upon themselves to help out more. They took wood back to Hard Rock area. And they helped the elderly in their area. Uh, just quite a few people like that. Uh, Angie Nez from uh, 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 Preston Mesa. Mm-hmm. Uh, her and her family would come out, load, and take it back, and they would distribute out in Preston Mesa area. Uh, just started making ties with a bunch of uh, groups out there that started doing this as well. Um, uh, Cindy B.K., Marla, they came from uh, Page area, so Copper Mine area. So it just started getting bigger and bigger, and it was going out further. Mm-hmm. So we, so real um, quick, um, you know, in the in these early days that you're reflecting on in your work with the Nature Conservancy and uh, and them making available, you know, 500 cords, where, where was this wood lo- located at? And um, and how, you know, what did it take for you to go and uh, and um, load this wood? I mean, obviously, uh, it sounds like it would be multiple trailer loads or was it somehow um made available to you where they delivered it but uh, maybe you can talk about that just a little bit um uh, nature conservancy um also run as a non-profit and they were talking about wood that's been um the the forest uh, national forest there in flagstaff and the surrounding areas has overgrown trees so they've been doing a thinning project for quite a few years so they had a bunch of wood that's been um, cut and stored out by Williams area. So they talked about getting 48 trucks um, to run back and forth. And they had the equipment to go out there and load those logging trucks. Those logging trucks you probably pass when you're going down to Phoenix and you see them in the Flagstaff area. So those are the trucks that went out there, got loaded and drove out to Tuba City. Um, Working with the uh, chapter house, they were able to use the forklifts that they had and offload it. So mainly the the getting the wood to the reservation was all done by them. They covered the the cost of the trucking, and mm. so it was up to us just to get it processed and get it out to families and the homes. Oh wow! What kind of what kind of wood was it mostly? I mean, I know if they're doing thinning projects up in uh, northern Arizona, there's probably uh, you know different types of wood. But what kind of what kind of wood were they uh, providing to you? Um, we had a lot of um, ponderosa pine, uh, quite a bit of um, what's that aspen. So mainly mainly that. And so um, they would uh, they would bring those. Uh, they would bring those big uh, trees, uh, you know, uncut all down to uh, the Tuba City Fairgrounds and then uh, unload them there. And then you and your team or your volunteers or the people that um, needed um, wood, um, after you got the word out, they'd come and they'd kind of chop their own and, uh, and load their own. Yeah. So we had, we tried to schedule it to what we have on days, like, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we have it open and we'd be there all day and cut and help people load and uh, just people coming around. We just, at the beginning, we really didn't take people's names. Um, we just had them coming in and we went off the old system, honor system, you know, mm. but um, as we move forward, um, as we still communicated with Nature Conservancy, we, we knew we still need to keep track of where, where it's going. So not until after a while, we started writing down and documenting everything. So at the beginning, that was uh, that was where we didn't track some of it, but we got quite a bit of um, uh, information of where it went. Do, do you think that most of this would uh, just, um, I mean, by your estimation and maybe some of the, you know, uh, when you were like tracking it, 
was it mostly um, distributed around Western or did you get people coming in from Northern Eastern agencies, you know, to, uh, to uh, get some of this wood? Uh, we got some from Northern. We had a gentleman from um, our Mannheimer, er, I think it was Ernie Mannheimer. Uh, he come from uh, Inscription House area and he took care of elderly out that way, Navajo Mountain. So we know it went out that way. Uh, we as a team personally took some out to um, Sh uh, Shiprock area. Uh, we know of a group that came from um, Chin Li. Uh, they came out and loaded some. Uh, we also got a call from uh, Eastern Agency, uh, was it Tohatchi area? So we ran a few trailer loads of logs out that way as well. Oh, I see. I see. What kind of equipment do you, uh, do you use? You know, I'm sure that it's, you know, of course we have chainsaws and axes and, uh, but did you, uh, did you utilize a wood splitter? Did you already have a wood splitter? Uh, anything like that? Also, like what kinds of uh, trailers are you, you have uh, flatbeds at your disposal? Or are you guys using a, uh, horse trailers or anything like that you know how what kind of equipment does it take to kind of to process this wood and transport it um we have multiple saws probably about eight saws now that we've accumulated throughout over the years and uh, we had one wood one wood splitter that we obtained uh, probably about four years ago when they had a black friday thanksgiving sale so uh, we always been in doing wood so we want to make it easier for 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 us to split so we obtained one of those a while back and uh, it was just a small like 22 ton and that was just one and then uh, we knew we were going to be busy with wood so we obtained a dump trailer it's a 16 foot delco um 14 000 pound trailer so we purchased that and um, 2020 summer, we were helping out with personal shopping. We started running hay. So we purchased hay out there to, um, where we could find it cheap and bring it back to the reservation. And what we paid is what they bought it for. Or we had a dollar to cover fuel back mm -hmm. two years ago. This fuel was a little bit cheaper. So it wasn't much of a markup. Yeah. So that's how that's how we work. So we bought hay for thirteen and sold it for fourteen. Um, mm -hmm. If we had enough funding, we could cover the fuel. We just sold it for what we bought it for. Um, that trailer that we haul hay with is a twenty foot uh, Delco, uh, two seven thousand pound axles, and that's for, good for fourteen as well. So we we'll bring back a hundred hundred bales on that. So that trailer can hold uh, four four cords on it. And then the dump trailer, if we put a little mound on it, it holds up two cords. Oh, wow. So we had those two trailers that we purchased in 2020. Um, we always had a small trailer. It's a small car hauler um, that used to belong to my uncle. And we fixed that one up and put new tires on that. And that's what we used to run. That's the first wood trailer we had. And that's what we used to run into the forest with. So we have uh, three trailers now. and. Um, eight saws and I think three log splitters now since uh, it got big and we, we continue to keep moving forward and um, our family's been able to obtain more so all the equipment and stuff like that but that's what we put our, our funding into so we go off to work on and try to split the cost on everything that's cool. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, were you, uh, obviously, you know, um, you, you guys were starting to, to kind of organize, um, maybe like you're saying the summer of uh, 2020 and, uh, on the Navajo nation, you know, we had our first case, um, right around, right around that spring. Um, but, uh, but, before your partnership with the Navajo and Hopi Families COVID-19 Relief Fund, were you already starting to hear um, some of your community members um, kind of voicing the need for uh, for wood? 
uh, also, you know, were you guys already doing this on your own? I mean, also like maybe thinking about just normally, you know, even before the pandemic, you know, were you wood hauling for your family and uh, kind of just providing these things uh, even before, you know, kind of the organization had taken on these responsibilities? Well, um, prior before the pandemic, that's what we were doing on a small scale. So on a small scale, meaning that in in a year, we probably processed 40 cords, that, that probably the max. So we have two cords at my mom's house and that just stayed there. We brought extra back for to help other elderly in our area. And um, so back then, what we what we determined the cost to get the wood was $78 for fuel and everything. Mm -hmm. So we bring it back and then so an elderly needs it. And we just ask them if you can help cover fuel. That's all that's all we can charge. So um, that was prior pandemic. And so we noticed a need for the elderly out there. We noticed a need that um, the there was more people that needed, so um, we opened it up to um, veterans, disabled, and the elderly, and quite quite a few people caught on to what we were doing, and they wanted us to see if we can set up because they wanted us to take their children out there. So they oh, said wow. that um, if we can teach my boys how to gather wood, what to look for, how to do all this, um, that's what it was turning into. Mm. pre-covid oh. and we we talked about it as a family and uh, what, what it was a it was an interesting concept but mm -hmm. um we just figured it would be better if the parents just tagged along and brought them out there and oh. instead of us just picking them up and taking them with us you know yeah so, a little bit of liability concerns yeah probably. yeah so that's what we figured out. So we had quite a few families come out and follow us and we showed them where and yeah. we just cut and they load and mm. have a little picnic out there, you know? Yeah. So pre, pre, that was pre-COVID. And um, like I said, it was the summertime and we were still gathering firewood and we were the only ones out there all summer long. Mm. And but man, was, there's nobody else out here. You usually you see a couple of families out there that are gathering and preparing but nothing yeah. so um, that was the that's what drove with the need and like we just said um well, these people are gonna need some help so mm -hmm. uh, just things just worked out where it, it was able to help everybody you know um so uh we're gonna we'll talk about a little bit of uh a little bit about the reach um in terms of how many people you might think you served and we can do this in you know a number of ways maybe you maybe you know exactly however you know uh, if if we had talked about you know, the nature conservancy uh, being able to provide 500 cords of wood and and you guys being able to undertake that get it to the um, uh, tuba city uh, fair area distribute that beyond that how many how many more cords of wood do you guys think you processed and even at that, you know, how many families do you think that you might have affected uh, or been able to assist? And, you know, we talked about some of the wood going beyond Western because Tuba City is uh, located in Western Agency. But, you know, do you feel you've been able to serve even all agencies in the, in the Navajo Nation? So, you know, the question being, you know, about how many people you think you might have been able to serve how many cords do you think you've processed and do you think you've hit almost all of the agencies? As far as all the agencies, it's, it's hard to tell. Um, I know we went, wood went to upper and lower Mooncopi village, wood, wood went out to Kokots movie. So it went on the Hopi reservation as well. Um, as we dropped off with different um, groups, family groups and organizations and not, not knowing how much how many families that helped so it's hard to get a, a solid number you know uh jonathan is out there by uh, tonali lake area we took a uh, quite a few cords out there and helped him because he's he's doing he's doing the same thing mm. for the elderly in his area wood and water 
Mm-hmm. Um, Light Hunter from there in uh, Antelope Hills. We dropped out quite a few chords there, and I know that a lot of people go up there and, and get help. Um, so it's just, it's just hard to tell. Um, then the hood's so strong. Our sister was out there, and she had a she had her campaign going on out there. So uh, all this wood went everywhere, even um, Tish for Che. Uh, we were able to get him a few loads, so he had uh, his 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 campaign going all over as well. So there's quite a few um, family groups and organizations that tried to help the whole reservation. So um, it, it's real hard to tell if it, if we were able to hit every agency. Um, and just uh, maybe maybe you can talk about this just a little bit, but I know that um, you know as we had entered into uh, fall of 2020. Uh, there was a lot of uncertainty with the virus. Those are things that we, we talked about. And uh, on, on our behalf, on the Navajo and Hopi Families COVID-19 Relief Fund, uh, we started to uh, think about you know, how we might be able to serve our elders by, um, or assist them uh, by, by, getting, um, by providing heating assistance. You know, uh, when we look at the Navajo Nation and even the Hopi Nation, a lot of our community members still have wood burning stoves. And so, uh, you know, there's that need for wood. And we keep talking about that. But the reason that we keep talking about it is because, um, you know, there was a way that directly we, we affected those uh, communities. And, you know, people saying, oh, man, it's, you know, we're, we're coming to the fall season and, uh, you know, we can't get out and, and um, you know, gather the wood, chop the wood, haul it ourselves. Uh, so we need some assistance. Uh, we also had, like we had talked about, you know, pandemic restrictions in place, stay at home orders. Um, and so at that time, maybe fall 2020, maybe late summer uh, 2020, um, I believe it was uh, our um, staff member, Teresa uh, Hatathli Delmar, who probably had uh, started to coordinate with you. So do you remember at that time, you know, maybe how you... Um, started to partner with the Navajo and Hopi Families COVID-19 Relief Fund? Um, Teresa Tati Delmore reached out um, asking if we were able to help. I don't think it was uh, the um, uh, veterans at coal mine said they had a group or they were able to process it if we could get them some logs. And so we ran a few trailers out there to a drop-off point and delivered it there. Uh, she also had a list of uh, people that needed, uh, just, it's just a text message, you know, this family's requesting wood and she just send a pin drop an address or something, um, just random out there. Like it'd be by Cow Springs, it'd be by coal mine, it'd be in Tuba City. So uh, it just turned in and we just um, looked it over and checked it and loaded up and delivered it. So, and just, that's how, that's how we ran the, the, the partnership. And uh, as, a, as we kept helping more and more, we got involved with uh, Jonathan, um, Jonathan Yazi out there in Tanawa Lake area. Mm. And, uh, his, he had uh, quite a list too. Mm. Um, as we moved forward, uh, there's quite a few entities out there. Uh, the a church group in Flagstaff, they wanted some logs. They said, we can help process it. We just uh, need the wood delivered here and let us know where to, to drop it off at. Mm-hmm. So we got two trail loads dumped there and we told them that Jonathan Yazi would be, would be the person to drop it off that's nearby to where they were at. So mm-hmm. it went from Flagstaff to to uh, the church by Mormon Lake and then they looked, they cut it, split it with their, their group and then they load it and deliver it out there to uh, to Nolly Lake area. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so it was just stuff like that going on throughout the whole time. So it was just uh, mm-hmm. it was good to see you know everybody working together. Mm-hmm. The relief fund was also able to support um, your organization, uh, as I understand, by um, maybe uh, helping, uh, providing a trailer that, that you used for a little bit and, and returned to us. Also maybe allocating a little bit of funding that might have went to um, help with a wood splitter 
and, and fuel reimbursements. Uh, is that is that correct? Is that a was that some of the partnership that that took place uh, between our organizations? Yeah, that that um part or that you're what you're talking about is what's um been put together this year right now. Um, so we have uh, fun, help with funding for fuel. So and also uh, to obtain a log splitter. And so what we plan on using the log splitter for is say a church group or any group out there that might need it to, mm -hmm. to process firewood, we could take it out and drop it off and they could utilize it. And when done, we can pick it back up. So that's the, that's the plan with, with that equipment. Um, our, we'll, we know who who's all out there that does still does what we do, mm -hmm. so we're still trying to gather as much as we can. Or we have at least twenty cords right now, stockpiled. Mm -hmm. So our our goal our goal is a hundred cords, so mm -hmm. it can um, we can process it and get it out there. As far as you know, the Western Navajo Fair is going to happen this year. Yeah. So we're not able to utilize the fairgrounds like previous years okay so if we do get logs uh there's requirements we we're supposed to meet when we do receive the logs it needs to be a fenced off area mm -hmm. and to find something like that where we can stage logs and have enough room for a diesel to turn around and stuff like that that's kind of like the fairground was the perfect spot you know flat ground yeah. so to find that kind of area again nearby uh, it's kind of difficult so, so currently, maybe uh, you're looking for that type of a staging area and uh, um, a storage area for uh, for hauling wood and and storing wood uh, to yeah. kind of replace what you know um, the the area that that you were using with the with the Tuba City Fairgrounds. So, you know, anybody out there who uh, might be able to assist um, and 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 might have a fenced off area. Uh, any groups, nonprofit groups that, you know, could assist uh, AJ, you know, make sure to, to reach out and uh, we'll, we'll put his, um, we'll put his website or his Facebook group in our chat room or on the, in the comment section of our live discussion here. So, you know, reach out if you can. Um, and, and, you know, because it goes to a good cause. It helps us all. Uh, one of the things that I did want to just kind of mention now and just kind of turn the discussion to is uh, uh, in terms of in terms of hauling wood and just chopping wood in general, you know, what are and, and being able to go out into the Navajo Nation. I mean, we have such beautiful land uh, in our, you know, Denebikea all over. It's really nice. What are some areas that that you like what are some areas that you've been to that you know you just uh, enjoy the scenery and enjoy you know maybe just the feeling of being out there um i'd say probably that nosh chitty area you know you come over the mountain we we went between uh what was that called uh wheat fields lake and you come around and you come down by crystal so we went to pull the trailer through there and that's some beautiful country right there um, and we delivered out by um, Tohatchi area, so so that area is pretty nice. And um, I say that um, what was it called? We we went up by um, Navajo, you know, MV mm -hmm. Monument Valley, Monument Valley area, um, Ocheto area. It's pretty nice areas as well. Mm. Um, getting to mm -hmm. see more of the the land that we have. So, um, what about uh, what areas do you feel uh, have uh, have have good wood? I mean, all of those areas probably do too. And what kind? Of course, you know, everybody has preferences of what kind of wood that they want to get. So, uh, or that they they like to burn in their homes. You know, what are some of those uh, preferences that you have? Um, I know. A lot of the elderly usually use um cedar, you know. Mm -hmm. They like they love that juniper, so they get we get requests for that a lot, and it's not something that's readily available to us. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's that's just a that's just one uh, oak. 
a lot of people love that oak because it burns hotter. Yeah, it burns hot. So um, that's not something that we get a lot of as well. So uh, it's more mainly due to going back just a little bit, due to um, thinking about what we're doing. We didn't want to take away from vendors or anything like that. So we stuck to just that one species of um, firewood, uh, ponderosa pine, because we knew that there were still vendors in the area that sold cedar, you know? So we didn't want to take um, anything away from people out there that have that business going, you know? Yeah. So it was a, there's a lot of thought into what we had going on and why we're just sticking with this ponderosa pine and why it's set up this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, as you go throughout the reservation, uh, you know, where I live in, in St. Michael's, but in Winter Rock, you go right across the um, state line to say Benito and uh, there's all the wood vendors there, you know, they're set up year round uh, with with loads of wood there, you know, almost every uh, main intersection in uh, in any of our towns, you know, in, in Tuba City, you see them. Uh, Ganado, Chinle, just all over Shiprock, everybody, you know, we have a lot of, uh, of our community members who uh, provide uh, some part of their livelihood by, by wood, wood cutting and wood hauling and providing that, selling it, uh, you know, out in the vending it in our, in their communities. So that's really, uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing that uh, you're thinking of in terms of being conscious of, um, uh, you know, sticking to one type of wood and, and letting the you know the vendors still do their thing so that, that's really awesome um are you uh, consistently in in preparation for the next uh, season then i mean like right now are you out and and wood hauling are you taking a break are you preparing uh for uh, our fall and winter season currently mm. anytime i have any time that's free that's why i run out to the forest you know it's a uh... It's what I enjoy. It's, uh, it's my passion, you know. I get peace of mind when I'm out there. Uh, just, just staying busy. Um, doing the wood, uh, working on vehicles, and just doing stuff with my hands. Mm -hmm. Help building something. As a, those are the things I enjoy. So when I'm not out working, uh, that's, I, I have free time that I'd be doing something around the house and um, wood hauling is one of the one of the ones I always turn to. Um, this is something we 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 always done when was growing up. Good man, that's awesome. Yeah, in our chat, uh, in our uh, comment section of our live discussion here, we have a couple shout outs. Mary Francis, uh, our staff, one of our staff members, said AJ and his entire crew are amazing. So thankful. So uh, thanks, Mary. Mary shouting out. Um, AJ here. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Sophie or Soph uh, Mannheimer Calderon said, hey, my brother AJ is a rock star. So uh, we have some people who are uh, also supporting what it is that you're doing. Uh, and we appreciate it. Uh, we, we also, as the Navajo and Hopi family uh, COVID-19 relief fund, um, we know that you were one of our uh, uh, partners who made it happen you know sometimes we get in these situations and we have to you know we need we need support uh, that's just how it is in in life and you know if we're going to do something and we're going to be successful we we need to have a team of people who are going to help us however that might you know come into play so as we had looked at our uh, our wood hauling and our elder heating uh, program you know, uh, AJ, you really stepped up. And so we're grateful for that. And uh, we're grateful uh, for the work that you've been uh, being able to uh, just consistently partner with us on. So thanks for that. Um, one of the things that I know that uh, our, um, one of our um, other staff members, Teresa Totley said, and I think that this is something that was really uh, relevant is that, you know, for for many of our elders, they still burn wood, and it's uh, it's it's like a long-standing cultural teaching that you should have a fire, you know, at home. Um, the fire it not it doesn't just provide heat, but it's symbolic uh, from a spiritual standpoint. Uh, in our culture, uh, we're taught that uh, 
The fire uh, in our home is what we use to feed our families, to mold our children's minds so that they always, they always come home to the fire. And so, uh, you know, many of our elders, they hold this teaching um, because it's, it, it's ingrained in our culture. And, you know, they still build fires, they still burn wood. Uh, they have a fire stick that they use uh, for protection. Um, our elder women, you know, they use fire to meditate and send out prayers and positive thoughts to their families and their, and their, um, and anybody that they're, you know, they're, they're trying to help. So um, when we look at um, providing these, this kind of assistance, you know, it goes beyond just um, providing warmth. You know, it, it, the way that we're, uh, been, we've been able to assist our community members is to help them strengthen their homes uh, during the pandemic. You know, the pandemic was really uncertain and um, we, but we all know that, but maybe one of the things that just kind of held us together and kept us uh, going was being able to, to know that we're gonna have that fire at home. And, uh, you know, it brings us together as a family. Uh, we gather around it. If we know we have a fire at home, we know, you know, that it's it's kind of symbolically a home and we gather there, we cook around it, uh, stay around it, you know. Um, even uh, you were talking about uh, some of our elders provide uh, prefer a certain type of, uh, of uh, wood, you know, because they want to use the ash and such. So there's a lot of there's a lot of different types of um, culturally relevant um, support that we've provided just by helping out with uh, heating assistance and wood hauling. So we wanna thank you for that. And maybe you could comment a little bit on that just in terms of how you've been able to, um, in your home, you know, how you guys have seen, you know, the fireplace and, and the burning of wood. <clears throat> um, growing up, we always seen it. Um, Say so I grew up out in Shanto. We had the fire going inside the home transfer the fire outside to the cookhouse or the shade house, uh, make our breakfast, cooked our lunch, made our dinner out there, and then to get ready for the night, we take the fire back inside. Uh, ceremonial purposes, we always had a fire going for just uh, about any occasion you have and thought and all that going on. We, the family get together and we all go wood hauling, you know, mm -hmm. um, drive out there and deliver to the spot where, where it was needed. Um, even just for uh, so it was it plays a big role in our in our teaching. So that's how that's how I grew up seeing how fire was used. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, uh, I'm gonna give you uh, just a little bit of time here, uh, just to uh, I know that there's some organizations and some people that that you have worked with, and I'll you know just for example, I know that. Um, with our uh, relief uh, fund, you know, we've partnered with um, with the county, with the National Forest Services or the local forest services, because even they've done uh, tree thinning types of projects and then said, hey, we've uh, we have wood here, you know, come and get it. And uh, I know that you've been a part of that, too. You know, we were at Schultz Pass, I believe it was uh, in, in, in 2021. And uh, they had stockpiles of wood there. They just said, you know, come and get it and haul it. And you guys can, uh, you know, use it to distribute to your, to your uh, communities. And uh, those things help us a lot. And uh, so uh, maybe you could, uh, if you wanted to shout out any of uh, the organizations, people that have helped you, you know, now's the time. So go ahead, AJ. Um, so shout out to Carl Livingston and... Uh... Uh, his crew, uh, Alamo Navajo Fire Logging Crew, or the logging crew that they were out there in Salts Pass that processed all that wood into ready, ready to burn um, pieces. Uh, LT John, um, his family, um, Cindy Begay, Marla, and their group, uh, Angie Nez. Um, we also uh, worked with Zolzani uh, a lot the past two years and his group, um, Collective Medicine, uh, Fundamental Needs at the end, we, we partnered up with them or we worked with him to um, get some after we ran out of wood uh, that was there at the fairgrounds. And uh, 
that's what we're running it from. Uh, uh, the another entity out there, um, Northern Dene. Um, we work with them and getting wood out to Shiprock area. Um, choose for Che, uh, Lauren Anthony. Um, all, all these people are just awesome. You know, they take time out of their lives to help individuals out besides themselves. Um, they're, they're, they're in it for the right reasons. They do everything to, to, to help. And that's who, that's who we want to be in, um, working with. Uh, makes things a lot easier, and uh, it's just, uh, it's just, it just feels good, you know. Yep. And every time I go out to go wood hauling, I always see my father every day, and mm-hmm. uh, I spend time with him. And yeah. as old as old as he is, uh, he's he, he still outworks me, you know. Every day, <laughs> we get, we get to load wood and. We grab the biggest pieces and try to load it up, and he's just right there, right beside me, you know. Yeah. Wow. Well, I got boys that are growing up, and we take them out there and show them what we're doing. And they enjoy it, you know. Yeah. It's just a part of our, our culture and what we do, and okay. they just need to learn that. But uh, there's a a whole bunch of people that so I, right now my mind's running and I can't yeah. think of everybody, you know. Yeah, that's fine. But, um, besides firewood, I just want to mention that we we were we are running we were running on coal the past two years. You know, Peabody Coal shut down, so we we had to go out to a Farmington area and uh, bring back coal and deliver it out to our families all over the reservation as well. Um, we had a a person that. Uh, helped us a lot. Uh, I'm not sure if we can mention their name right now, uh, but they were made a few phone calls for us to mm-hmm. get those extra loads of the coal delivered to um, Tuba City. So mm-hmm. each chapter is entitled to 15, 15 tons per month during the winter months from Navajo Transitional Coal. Mm-hmm. So what we got allocated was an extra 15 tons. So we utilized that. Mm-hmm. How to deliver it there in Tuba City, and we mm-hmm. just call people to let them know if you need it, it's there. So mm-hmm. every delivery that was made, um, it, it got picked up. Um, just the real small stuff is what was just left behind, but mm-hmm. everybody went after the, the, the chunky stuff. That's what we grew up knowing to load. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just, it's just been a good, uh, good deal all around. Um, a lot of people asked if we we're gonna transition into water we're going to help with water but uh, that that that's a whole that's a whole different thing for 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 us you know yeah um, that just takes a lot and we know quite a few people that are out there like uh, everybody i mentioned i know they're doing the same john Denez, he has he has his setup and how he has people coming around his his area mm-hmm. um i know um, marla and uh, cindy that they deliver water and help out in their area. So, um, so I know Zoe's still running water right now. Um, dig Deep, um, there's a person we work with that's in Dig Deep. Um, the, just all these organizations out there have been a big help and uh, um, just helping us get through everything. Yeah. Um, there's a, uh, shout out for uh, Dwayne Howe. Uh, he he helped us uh, get a donation for ten grand from uh, Marathon Petroleum. Oh wow! Uh, wow. That was uh, that was something big, you know. Mm-hmm. So I know the Nature Nature Conservancy. The past few years, that five hundred plus cords every year. That stuff ain't cheap, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. To to get equipment out there, to get it loaded and truck it in. That's, that's got to be quite a bit of money uh, to be used up, but uh, yeah. we try to do our part and get it all cut up and get it out of there. So, cool, cool. Well, hey, we thank thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, I know that uh, you have a lot going on. I know you're probably thinking about this weekend, what you might be doing, even looking uh, further into uh, you know the summer and the season and getting things lined up. 
And I know that we still have a partnership between us, uh, the, the Relief Fund and your organization. Uh, and, and just what you're doing is awesome, you know, in terms of thinking about um, the people, our people, and how we're able to assist them. And, you know, when we say that we're, we're inclusive of, uh, of our Hopi nations as well, too. Uh, a lot of this wood that was gathered and, and hauled went to our, our Hopi nations as well, to our Hopi brothers and sisters. So, you know, we look at it, we look at the people and we, and, and we see the needs there and we want to help continue to serve their, you know, serve their needs when we can, especially in times of, uh, of crisis or in times of, uh, you know, maybe uh, restricted uh, um, accessibility, anything like that. But uh, appreciate you being on today, AJ. Uh, we have your, uh, we have your um, Facebook page in the chat here in our comment section. So uh, people, uh, if you're listening, go ahead and add his, uh, add his page, follow his page. Um, from there, I'm sure you can get in contact directly if you need some uh, wood. You know, is that is that something that you're doing currently? Then, if people need wood, are they able to reach out to you? Now, uh, currently, we're trying to stockpile with the raising, raising high, the high gas prices. Is, we've just been mainly focused on using that to obtain all the wood that we can that's out there and bring it back and. We'll do something in the future, either try to look for more funding or do a fundraiser of some sort so we can have more to deliver it to people that need it um, and go from there, you know. So right now, it's just our main focus is on right now is a, is a time just to gather. So. Great. All right, AJ. Hey, man, thanks for joining. Uh, we're going to we're going to end the discussion today. Uh, just wanted to al always uh, send a reminder out to everybody who's viewing to uh, just uh, be careful out there. Uh, remember to just keep employing your uh, safety precautions if you can. Uh, our numbers, our COVID numbers in terms of new cases have been pretty low, but we do see an increase that's happening um, in terms of new cases, both on the Navajo Nation and on the Hopi Nation. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, gatherings that have taken place uh, this year, just in terms of graduations, graduation dinners. Uh, we've had uh, conventions and conferences outside of the Navajo Nation that people uh, are attending and coming back to. So we got to always be uh, conscious and cognizant that uh, if we're out and we're about and we're coming back into the home, uh, you know, we could be uh, bringing uh, the virus back in. Um, so, you know, right now, a lot of people are getting vaccinated and boosted. If you haven't gotten vaccinated and boosted, please uh, call your local uh, IHS or medical facility, schedule it, see if you're able to get in. If you're 50 years and older or if you're immunocompromised uh, and you need a booster, call your um, call your local uh, medical uh, service facility and schedule it and get in there and, uh, and, and get that booster, you know. Uh, some people have been um, affected recently by catching uh, COVID, but they have been uh, vaccinated and boosted. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, you can still get it even though you're vaccinated and boosted. That's, yes, that's true. That's been, that's been the case all along. But what what people uh, need to also consider is that having those antibodies in you helps you fight the virus uh, a little bit more effectively and you won't yeah. get as severely infected or uh, you won't have such uh, severe um, uh, sickness if you if you get it. So uh, stay tuned in to us uh, at our page as well too. And uh, we wanna see you guys around next week and the week after. So take care of yourself. So thanks AJ, how going at? Check on your elderly guys. All right.